Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be installing our Bilstein leveling kit. <clears throat> so this kit um, comes with two front shock absorbers, uh, which are the, we opted for the um, reservoir less. So these would be the same shocks that you would get with reservoirs if you ordered the kit with, uh, 50, I think they're 5160s. This kit was pretty, uh, pretty affordable. I think it's right around 450. Uh, you can find deals out there, but it's it's a pretty nice kit. The last truck we had, the 14 had um, coil spacers on it. Um, I didn't really like the way that it that it sat. Um, adjusting things was a little more difficult, probably because the spacers um, angle was not entirely correct or just too much. Um, so with this kit, you get two new shocks. Uh, these are length and travel. So right now we've got the 4600s. The 5100s are essentially valved pretty similar is what I was told, but they're lengthened compared to the 4600s. So we're gonna leave the 4600s on the back and 5100s on the front. Um, then we're gonna install our springs. Um, these are, I don't believe, progressive. So probably yield a, a very similar ride but um, it should raise it, it, it says two to 2.3 inches, I think is what it was um, calling for. Um, and then we change out our, our uh, isolators. Um, and this is nice because this essentially was what the, the coil spacer was. Um, it just had a, uh, like an alignment um, stud on the spacer, but it was lengthened and then it contacted the spring. So these are different sizes. Um, from top to bottom, so um, at least that's what it says. So I I don't know what the difference is as far as like measurement wise, but we can probably take a measurement and show you guys that. Anyways, so we got that, and we'll be replacing stock springs, forty six hundreds, and then taking it for an alignment. We are also changing out these Aturo 33 by 12 and a half R20s. So anyways, we'll walk you guys through the, the steps to um, to swap these springs out. Should be pretty quick today. Uh, this, this should not take an entire afternoon to, to swap springs um, if you're mechanically inclined at all. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, guys, so from here, um, because my garage is not exactly super tall and I don't have a lift, um, we've decided to remove the front tires. Now, the instruction manual or instructions that come with the kit um, from Bilstein say to uh, put the wheels on the ground, lift the frame, not the wheels off the ground, disconnect the track bar, um, so disconnect the track bar, bar here at this point rather than down um, past here and then also disconnect the sway bar end links here so once you do that um, the track bar is going to allow the uh, axle to come down straight and not be pushed off to one side um, as a track bar normally would this is why you would want to install an adjustable track bar because as you come down or you go up with the truck um, frame away from the axle because of the length of that track bar it's gonna it's gonna move in an arc so as you go up with the frame or down with the axle away from the frame the track bar is gonna want to push the axle to the driver's side um, and then as you as you come back up towards it it'll move it back towards so when you weight it or put weight on it it'll move it back up towards the passenger side and center it so the reason you get an adjustable track bar is so that you can account for the the length of travel that you've already um, 
increased. Uh, whether it's two inch, three inch, what have you. Um, that's something that we're gonna look at doing here in the future just to get it aligned correctly. But um, if there's any misalignment at all, there might not be hardly any or, or not anything that's really noticeable. Um, so anyways, so we'll take those two locations loose, use two jacks to lower the axle um, towards the ground, and then we'll have to use two jacks at the same time to, to bring it back, back up so that we can install our springs. Uh, this can be kind of tricky with one person, um, but it's totally doable, I've done it before. Um, and then to get the axle to drop, uh, what's really holding it up is the shock absorber. So we'll take the shock absorber loose up here at the top, inside of here, and then down at the bottom here. Uh, the length and shock is so that you don't have to use extension brackets, which is what we had on the last truck, only because the shock absorbers were brand new. Uh, I think I put the level kit on it like 20,000 miles. So we had a lot of life left in the um, in the shock absorbers, so I didn't want to just throw good parts away. The other thing you want to be aware of is when lowering this, you have these brake lines here that are attached to the axle, and they're only going to flex so much. So what you may want to end up doing is just disconnecting them here. Um, I don't see in the instructions where it tells you to do that. Um, so you might want to look at just, just take these bolts loose. There's only two. Actually, I think there's only one. Yeah, there's only one. Um, it looks like it might be a 13 millimeter, but um, we'll see once we get to that point. So we'll take those loose just so that... Um, those things can move freely from the center part of the axle um, past the knuckle here. And then that way we don't risk damaging any anything uh, up this way from pulling excessively on it. And then once we, once we bring it back up, um, we'll tighten them back up and, and secure everything. So let's get back to it. All right guys, so <clears throat> disconnecting the sway bar end links. Um, you will have to use a adjustable wrench. Um, getting it off with an impact or um, a small impact even uh, will prove to be on some trucks pretty challenging. Um, but if you just take one like this because it's got the flat edges here and a wrench, you'll probably have pretty, pretty decent success uh, with getting it done only because the um, the joint likes to spin, um, so if you hold it, you'll get it. You'll get it loose. Um, I don't have a ratcheting wrench, otherwise I'd be using one. Um, but it's a 13 sixteenths. Um, there was a little bit too much play in the uh, 22, but if you have a 6.22, that would probably work just fine. Um, if you can get a six point on it, so. Just hold one end, uh, putting pressure on the joint here with a, uh, with a pry bar did not prove to be successful. So we're just gonna take it loose here like, like this, or try to. And then we'll do the other side the same way, uh, just taking it loose. All right, so what I like to do here is um, remove it and then put the nut right back on it. So that way we don't lose parts, we know where they went to. And then once the other side is disconnected, we can just kind of drop this and, uh, and let, it, let it hang. All right, so we got our breaker bar on here. We're just gonna push on it. And it's pretty, it's pretty tight in there, even that flag nut. So we might not even need to hold on to it for right now. So now it's going to start to turn. So we'll use our adjustable to get in here, hopefully. Maybe. All right, I'm gonna transition to something a little bit faster and then get right back to it.
hold this. Okay. So now that's loose. So we can go ahead and move the track bar. We've got our axle supported with the two jacks. And then we'll start lowering down to hopefully get these springs out. All right, guys, track bar is out. You can see it. It's hanging here. Um, you may have to jack up the driver's side just a little bit um, just to get this bolt to pull out to get enough slack on this. And then we also had to use a slight pry bar to just kind of pry on it a little bit to straighten this up because it likes to twist um, with the axle being uh, forward and the drive shaft angle. It likes to kind of twist forward a little bit. So um, if you just pry on that, um, on this edge right here, right here, against here, pry it back, it'll rotate, and then you can just kind of wiggle the bolt loose. Um, so we'll continue. All right, guys. So we've got the uh, we got the size wrench we need. Um, however, looking at the the mounts or the shock uh, studs, they're pretty rusted. So we're going to go ahead and spray them down with a little bit of WD-40. We've been kind of testing out this uh, it's Amsoil Metal Protector. Let me get my painter's tape off here for my straw, but. Um, it's the Amsoil Metal Protector. Uh, it's supposed to help free rusty parts, just like WD-40. It's essentially the same thing. It's just made by Amsoil. So uh, we've been spraying everything down with this, just kind of testing it. And uh, so far, it works pretty pretty darn good, I think. Uh, but no issues. The wrench size for the, uh, for the upper nut is an 18. So if you go ahead and grab your 18, you can go ahead and start loosening that nut. Got a 17 for some reason. It's pretty tight in here, um, so I would not recommend probably putting the um, adjustable, or not the adjustable, but the ratcheting side on here, um, just because you might you might not be able to get it off. Once you get the nut loose, you have to kind of finagle it. So just go ahead and. This one doesn't seem to be turning the actual shaft that's on the shock absorber, so I think we'll be good as far as just having enough pressure on this. We don't have to lower it, raise it, nothing like that. Um, so we'll get this off and then get our axle down, swap out our springs, and uh, go from there. All right, so this one also has a... Uh, a flag nut on the back down here so with that one since we're not putting a, a ton of pressure on it we'll just go ahead and um, loosen that one again Here you got it, right here if you can see that flag nut goes on this way. So we got that one, and then like this, maybe. I need to lift up on it or lower it a little bit. Right, 
and it just pops out. For sure. There it is. Okay, so essentially on the 4600 shocks, you got two bushings, a bottom and a top, a sleeve, or a protective sleeve, and then the shock absorber itself. So this will go over. These will go on. This is uh, the washer that the bushing sits on. The bushing comes up into the top. This one comes down like this. And then the nut secures on the top of this. Like so. So that's our first shock out. Let's go do the other one. We'll get these springs swapped out and then we'll also, actually before we swap the springs, uh, I missed something because I wanted to take, um, you guys can see them, let me see. I wanted to take these brackets that secure the, looks like brake lines. So we will uh, we'll take this loose just so that they move freely uh, independent of the axle. All right guys, and just like I said, <clears throat> For these uh, brackets, they are uh, they are a 10 mil, or I'm sorry, not a 10 mil, a uh, 13 mil bolt that can be removed. Not really removed, but disconnected, if you will, from the axle, and then this will yield you some uh, some play um, in the lines themselves, just so that they don't get snagged on anything. Um, the other thing that you want to watch for is the vent, the vent line, if you're coming down uh, quite a ways. Um, but that, I mean, that's just a simple line that <clears throat> just kind of gets stuck on there. And uh, if you end up pulling it off, you can still redo it um, or reconnect it. So take these loose on both sides, I would recommend, uh, just so you don't get yourself in some trouble and start bending these lines. Um, it'll at least give you some some wiggle room here I guess we're gonna come down just a touch um, just to lower the springs and then hopefully this thing cooperates with us so we'll come down a little bit on each side just to drop the springs okay and then it'll rest more Let's see where our springs are at I don't think they're loose yet nope and you can just keep walking them down. loose yep that one's loose so now you can see the isolator falls out there's a little alignment stud so we can probably stop about there and pull the spring out so we'll do this side first and then we'll do the, the other side All right, the next thing that they say is to install these so that the Bilstein that's printed on them is legible and that the end gaps are different. So the end gaps here and here are slightly different. And it's important that they are installed in such orientation. So we're gonna go ahead and get these on along with our isolators and then go from there. All right guys, so unfortunately our other camera died, but uh, we're gonna continue along with our installation. We're gonna get this isolator up, secure it with our 13 millimeter lock nut. Uh, it's gonna go in the same orientation because it's oriented by the stud. All right guys, so we get all these sweet bushings um, you get one for the one for the bottom, which would be this one. Uh, I believe one of these should take this. I think it's the bottom one that takes this little spacer. Um, there should be a cup. So this this is labeled upper. 
Hmm. That one's leveled upper as well. That's strange. Okay, well, essentially they're the same part, so we'll look back in the instructions. Just make sure that there's nothing um, that could go wrong or be placed in the wrong spot. So this one is labeled lower. And this one isn't labeled at all, but you can kind of take your best guess at it. I mean, if one's labeled lower, one's labeled not labeled at all, it's probably the upper. You got your nut, so two washers, like that, and that's how it's going to go on. All right, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so we got to get weight up on the upper tops of the shock absorbers because they uh, don't want to tighten. They just want to turn, so we'll get some weight on those, but also down here we're having a little bit of an issue with the track bar so essentially what happened was we lowered the axle we let everything all the adjustments and everything that it had we let them go um, so what the track bar did is it shifted the axle that way so when we brought it up uh, the holes were not aligned and I don't know if I can get you to see up in there but you can kind of see it's not aligned completely but what we had to do was take an alignment punch alignment punch stick it in there put the track bar up, stick it in there, and then just kind of pry it. And when we did that, it moved the entire axle along with the track bar towards the driver's side so that we could then reinsert our bolt. We got it about halfway through. Well, really, I'd say 95% of the way is, is through. But now it's kind of, you can see it, it's kind of tilted like this. So what we need to do is just kind of pry down. And this is a, this is a definite, um, you will probably experience this. So. This is how you remedy that situation, is by just sticking in here, you can kind of pry down, and you can see it kind of, you know, twist, and then that should line it up with the other hole, and you'll be able to slip that bolt in. All right, so we tried to kind of gently tap it in uh, with a, uh, like a plastic mallet, like one of these. However, it did not want to go in, so, we pried down on it a little bit, and we hit it with the, with the old 3 ace DeWalt impact. Um, that got it sent in, and then we were able to put the nut on the back and just kind of tighten it down. So nothing has been torqued yet. Um, we're just kind of getting everything uh, put back together, and then we're going to torque it afterwards. Um, so once we get all the, the weight on it and everything, uh, we'll torque everything. All right, guys, at this point, <clears throat> we've got the, the track bar is somewhat tight. Um, it's not torqued, but it's tight. Um, we've got the bottom bolts on the shocks tight. Um, the isolator bolts up top here. Right, right there. Are tight. Um, the only ones we don't have super tight are the top shock mount bolts and the sway bar and links. Um, anytime you do anything with like sway bars, bushing, stuff like that, um, a lot of times it's recommended that you don't fully tighten you don't fully tighten them until they're on the ground and have weight on them. The reason for that is as you tighten these bushings uh, or these bolts up on the sway bar bushings or any of the bushings really, the weight of the vehicle is off. So when you tighten them, it's locking this um, this bushing into a particular position. Once you tighten them down and then you put weight on it, now all that weight is transferred to the component and the bushing and now you're you risk the chance or you take the chance of twisting the bushing inside um, of the mount or wherever that bushing is um, so that's something you don't want to do so a lot of times you can leave them kind of loose lower the vehicle tighten everything up so we're going to reinstall this um, brake line bracket here on both sides and then we'll put the wheels back on lower everything down um, and then torque everything back up.
All right, guys. So that's the level right there. Looks pretty good. And looks like the spacing is about the same. I bet if we measured, I bet if we measured the, the spacing, it would probably look or be the same or very close. Um, so this kit will settle and it is supposed to have a, uh, a slight rake still to the front. So right now we're kind of on an incline because the back tire is out of the garage, the front tire is in the garage. So um, we'll see how it settles and take pictures of it in just a little bit once we get the alignment done and all that stuff, then I'll come out. And uh, we're also gonna swap the tires on this uh, to some 35s. So we're gonna do the Cooper AT3 XLTs um, on these, take these off. And then uh, we might save these just to put on some different rims or something, um, just to see how they do. But I got rid of my 14, so I don't have any 20 inch rims anymore, unfortunately. So not sure what we're gonna do with these yet. Um, they got a little bit of life left in them, but not, they're pretty close. I, I don't wanna have to change these in the middle of the year or something like that. So. Let's get everything torqued down and then uh, we'll head over and, and get the alignment done and then hopefully start installing some other mods as well. Not really mods, but upgrades. Uh, we got some NFAB uh, side steps, which will be in another video. We'll show that. Um, and then I'm just gonna show you guys how to get the, uh, how to get the alignment set up. So you'll see what the specs look like, where to adjust on here and all that good stuff. All right, guys, so total time for this, uh, we've been at it about two hours. We started at probably, I don't know, 8.30. It's now like 10.23-ish. But um, what we ended up doing <clears throat> to get to this top shock bolt, it's um, it's actually pretty pretty tough. Um, from, the, from the inside, you can't really get to it down here because there's a bunch of stuff in your way. There's not enough room. Uh, we got to it with our DeWalt Impact. Um, you really, once this starts spinning, you can try to hold on to it, but you're not going to be able to. All right, guys, so as you can see here, the front shock absorber upper nut is 27 foot-pounds, and the shock absorber lower bolt is 89 foot-pounds. So if you're wondering what those are going to be, that's what they roughly are. Is 27 foot-pounds upper shock absorber nut, the one we're tightening now, and 89 for the bottom. guys so we're uh we're on our way to go get an alignment on this thing um, we're also going to be mounting our 35 by 12 and a half uh, r20 cooper at3 xlts um, we're going to be replacing the 33s that we have on here from a turo uh the turo trail blade xts uh, like we had mentioned before uh, this truck did come, it's an 18, it did come already with the, uh, the drag link welded as per the FCA recall. Uh, the V06 recall uh, had been performed already. So we're going to try to adjust this uh, from what I was told by a dealership. We're going to try to adjust it like they said they would do it, which is not re-welding or even breaking the weld that is um, that is welded currently so um, what they say is that you shouldn't have to adjust the drag link and um, you should only have to adjust tow so we're gonna see how well that works um, I have my doubts but it might be possible with uh, pushing the center link so that you know you keep the wheel straight and then you just use the tow to adjust uh, the outer the outer uh, tie rod ends so we'll see how that works um, and then I'll, I'll show you guys the specs we are probably gonna have to do something with the uh, with the caster on this um, just to kind of correct the angle um, of the pinion and all that stuff uh, but also to um, get our because once you go lower or excuse me once you raise your truck 
further away from, or the frame further away from the axle, um, the axle moves in kind of like an arc. So uh, we're going further back in that arc, um, and so that's why you need to uh, readjust your caster so that um, when you're static, it doesn't sit further back and then um, mess with any type of um, steering issues or anything like that as far as like steering return and, and, and things of that nature. So um, we've got about 2,665 miles uh, on the truck so far. Um, so we're going to, you know, do the alignment, get it correct, put the new tires on, and then we'll start from scratch uh, on tracking mileage. So I want to touch on the kit that we put on. Um, we put the Bilstein kit on because it already has Bilstein shocks. Um, I do like the Bilstein shocks. I think they're really good. Um, shock absorbers, I'm not doing any crazy off-roading or anything, so I didn't have a need for, say, Fox or any of them. Um, and they're super expensive. I kind of wanted to stick with just a level and something that would give me the look that I wanted. Um, I didn't want spacers, so that's why we opted for the Bilstein kit because it had the length and springs, uh, which at the time when I did my 14, it did not have, um, I didn't see any like cheaper uh, spring kits out there um, like the Bilstein ones. They were all Carly, Thurin, uh, and don't get me wrong, those are very, very nice kits. Um, however, they're a little bit more than what I was looking to spend. Um, so this one was super affordable, right around 450. Um, comes with the 5100 shocks. You can get the reservoir 5160s for the front and then the springs. So far, I'm really, um, I'm really impressed with the way that it uh, that it rides. They're they're really really nice. Um, I don't feel like it rides even the same as stock. It's just it's a much smoother ride. So, um, with that being said, we'll get to the alignment, and then uh, we'll get it. We'll get another picture taken so that you guys can kind of compare the the different tire sizes: 33 to 12 and a half, or uh, 33 to 35s, and then um, you know you, you can kind of see what you know if you want to look a similar look. A two and a half inch or two inch level from Bilstein uh, will look like with a 35 inch tire or a 33. So I'll take pictures of of both, and then um, you guys will have have that. Uh, we aligned it to the Thurin specs, uh, Thurin Fab specs, um, with the wider, bigger tires. Uh, Thurin recommends a caster of like you know 3.2 little bit more you know um, so we set it I think around 3.7 on one side and we got it pretty close to it's within 0.3 um, I think we can still kind of improve on the steering wheel alignment we actually ended up having to because we had the vo6 recall done um, without knowledge of it before we bought the truck um, those welds were Round down, if you will. Uh, we're gonna look at getting an upgraded um, drag link, like a Synergy or something like that. So um, we have a little bit of a fitment issue with the tires. Um, we don't have. I know a lot of guys run like a negative 44 offset, things like that. We're running a negative 18 on 35s, um, which I think is not enough for just barely. I mean, it's it's just a touch. Um, it's just barely touching the inner fender and fender flare uh, when we start looking at um, the inside. Um, our speedometer is off, so when we're going like 55, 56, it's showing roughly about 61. Uh, so we're going to go back with the Alpha OBD, reset the, um, the speedometer and the ABS again, get that done. And then I'll, uh, I'll talk to you guys and show you guys the specs that we set it at. Uh, toe is good. It's close to zero. Um, but, you know, we've got kind of, we're going straight, but the steering wheel's a little bit off. It's not bad. Um, 
but I'll, I'll show you guys the uh, the end result here. Uh, um, I did end up grabbing the thorn specs here, so um, that we can kind of gauge it off of this. This is what the specs were when um, that we used for the 14 when we aligned it, and uh, it, it worked out really well. Um, but as you can see here, for the 2010 through 19 um, diesel trucks, uh, they recommend a 3.2 to a 4.0 caster and 0 to 0 0.05 total tow in. So we got the tow where it pretty much needs to be. Um, yes, it's not in the red, but that's because obviously the green is the factory specs and they want you at a certain uh, tow in, which would not work very well. You get a lot of excessive tire wear on um, the outer edge of your tires. So that's why Thurin recommends uh, zero as close as possible. So we've got like 0 0.03 degrees, which isn't bad total tow in. Um, and these, these are, these aren't static measurements. Um, they, they do change. So this is just when we caught it at the moment, but it was like 0 0.01 on both sides and then it just didn't freeze right away. Um, another thing to pay attention to is your thrust angle. Uh, not really too much you can change on that um, unless you get like adjustable um, suspension components for the rear. But this, um, you know, you could try to loosen the, uh, the, uh, the attachment points, pull it or push it one way or the other and then retighten. That might do you some good um, for some slight adjustments. But other than that, that's pretty much our, our alignment specs there. Camber was good. It's not gonna, it shouldn't be off um, because it is a straight axle. So that's gonna be adjusted if you're, or not adjusted, but it's gonna be off from side to side if you have things going on with like your ball joints and stuff like that. So anyways, that'll conclude this video guys. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button turn uh hit the bell for the notifications so that when we upload videos you get to uh, be notified to view them um, and that we've posted them and uh hit that hit that like button if you like this video comment down below um if you have any uh any feedback for us or would like to see something we'll try to get it up for you uh, but again thanks for watching and uh have a blessed day